Chinese stocks have been surging in recent days, including a session earlier this week that saw them posting their biggest single day gains in 16 years. Investors are reacting to government unveiling a series of bold stimulus measures to tackle several economic challenges, including an ailing labor market, a housing crisis and weak consumer demand. My next guest describes these as latest efforts, efforts as unprecedented. Heining Zha is Vice President and Director of Asset Allocation at TD Asset Management, and he joins me now. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. I, uh, it's been extraordinary what has happened in, in, uh, in the market. And I know another commentator I was listening to talked about, you know, the entire, uh, you know, Chinese recession erased in five days in the market. That's exactly what happened. Uh, you know, um, it is highly unusual. But if you think about why they are doing it now, they have every reason to do it. There are some weird things going on. So if you look at the, for example, M1, um, in the last 20, 25 years, it has never been negative. And earlier this year, we have negative print, which has never happened before. Um, and another data point, if you look at a mortgage, um, it never happened before that the household is actually paying back mortgage. The mortgage loan is actually decre uh, decreasing and growing at a negative rate. Uh, so these are all some of the strange things that happen that you know put um, policymakers on high alert. Um, let, let's so they saw the alerts and then I'm taking your words here. This was a generational move in the markets that people saw, so it was impressive. Can you just talk a bit about? how they responded to those alerts that they saw. What did the government do? So before, they are doing baby steps in the face of a death spiral. So as you can see, uh, it is not enough. Um, some of these data points, they continue to deteriorate to the point that they have to react. Um, and if you're looking forward, um, in November, we'll have US election. What if Trump got uh, elected? And there could be another source of external shock. When that happened, the death spiral is actually going to be even worse. Mm. So I think they are doing this at the right moment. Okay. So monetary policy, housing market, capital markets, what did they do? So let's go through uh, one by one. Okay. So in terms of monetary policy, there are a lot more that they did this time around. Uh, first of all, number one, uh, on the reserve requirement ratio cut, they cut by 50 basis points. This is kind of expected because there is ample liquidity within the Chinese economy. The problem is the household and the private enterprise, they don't want to use that liquidity to any, either for doing business or for investing because it's a very bleak picture out there. Um, the second component is they cut the reverse repo by, 25, uh, by 20 basis points. So if you look at this 20 basis points, in the last uh, few uh, set, um, you know, policy changes, they are cutting by 10 basis points. So this is actually more than what they did before. Uh, and the third component, if we're moving um, down the yield curve, looking at one year medium term lending facility, they cut by 30 basis points. Again, it's higher than what they did before. Before they were only doing 10, 20 basis points. Um, and most importantly, this time around, they make the, um, monetary stimulus open-ended. So the central bank governor make it very clear that in the upcoming quarters, months or quarters, there will be more. So very rarely you see central bank governor proactively communicate the policy like that. It's a little bit like forward guidance mm -hmm. used by the Fed. Interesting, so it's not just what they did, which was significant, but it was more to say there is more to come or they, they, you should be expecting more to come. Yeah. Um, Maybe just take us through about what you think that more to come could be. And again, if you had a crystal ball, I'm sure you would be able to tell us everything. But what are the kinds of things you could see happen at this point? Right. Um, so on the monetary policy front, they can further cut triple R rate, reserve requirement rate, and also all kinds of interest rate, including the loan prime rate, which directly loan, uh, linked to the corporate lending rate and mortgage rate. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is actually related to the second component, the housing market. One of the biggest things they did is to lower the um, mortgage rate on the existing mortgage by 50 basis points. So this will um, result in an immediate saving of 150 billion RMB for the consumer and households. Mm. Um, and given the interest rate cut in the, res uh, in the re reverse repo in the upcoming months, 
this loan prime rate will also be cut another 25 basis points. And the loan prime rate, these mortgages are set uh, on an annual basis. And most of the, the reset will happen earlier next year. So if you count for how much the loan prime rate has already gone down, plus this additional 50 basis points cut, we are talking about roughly one trillion uh, consumer savings, which roughly equals 1% of GDP. Wow, and so that's money going into consumers' pockets today that they didn't have before, and then hopefully get them stimulating the dis dom domestic side of the economy, right? right? I didn't right. let you get to the ball. So in capital markets then too, is there more you're expecting to happen on that front as well? Exactly, that's actually the most innovative part. So they created something that we have never seen before. The first one is 500 billion liquidity facility for non-financial, non-bank financial institutions. For example, mutual funds, insurance company, broker dealers. The sole purpose of the money, you can only use it to buy equity. So which never happened before. So you can almost think of it as a quasi QE. So I think for any investor investing in the developed market, when you hear the word QE, you should be on high alert because QE means more return for the investors in the long run. Mm. Um, the second facility they created is a corporate buyback facility. So right now, you know, in the U.S., the, the U.S. government actually ta put on a 1% tax on a corporate buyback. But in China, after they put out this uh, new facility, they are borrowing, uh, they are lending you money at two and a quarter percent for you to buy back corporate shares. So just imagine if a company, its dividend yield is four or five percent, which there are plenty in the Chinese equity space because the stock price has gone down by so much, but they keep their dividend, then that two and a quarter uh, percentage borrowing rate versus that four or five percent dividend yeah. rate means that as an investor, if you buy back, you can immediately gather that roughly 2% yeah. um, yield spread. Hmm. Um, it's extraordinary in terms of how much and, and how targeted some of these are as well too, like some to the consumer, some to the capital markets to keep things going. Um, I I'm gonna ask you, uh, is this time for investors to start focusing on China again or do did, did we miss it? Was that the big move, you think? Or did, what, where, how should people think about this? This kind of very violent rally is kind of unfriendly to most of the investors because yeah. investors are still stuck in a bearish sentiment or bearish mood. Then all of a sudden come with this step change. It is very hard for investor to all of a sudden change their investment attitude. Um, so very few of them actually benefit from this rally. But if you missed out on last week, you are already missing out roughly 25% of return. Wow. Um, but to be fair, even after 25% rally, the Chinese equity valuation is still relatively low. Uh, the 4P is trading a r r roughly 13 times. So it's not expensive at all. And um, there are, in the near future, there could be more policy stimulus um, coming.